That like that. Clarence up towards centre half forward. Callan's mark. Good cost of a goal. And of all the decisions all day with players have laid over the top of the ball and they haven't pinged one, one where Blackaby was kneed in the head. Should have gone his way. It didn't. Cullen is a huge chance to kick this goal. If he decides to go for goal, he doesn't. The better option is Sean Williams, who's even more of a chance from 35 metres. Will Clarence open up this grand final in this third quarter? They lead by 15 points. And it won't be much more, if any, than that. Brownless again. Richie lurking. He's already kicked one of these. Richie snap. Oh, we don't want one of those. It'll bring rain in the goal square. Rovers required. Humphrey hand passes over the top. And Higgins comes out of the fence up towards the weak hill. Gets his body in front. Hull punches it out. Hurd runs onto the ball. And we'll see a ball in on centre wing. And the rain is tumbling. Dean, well, McCartan nudged him out of the road. Humphrey, wobbly left foot kick. Horn wrapped up by Clarence. Morby comes out of it. Smothered kick by Noonan. Morby, another smothered kick by Williams. Heard runs onto the ball, gives it back to Stevie Wright. Stevie Wright chips it inboard. He's got Richie. I think the tide's turning. I think you're right, Bob. The smothers in that uh, frenetic passage of play allowed the ball to come free. Noonan was the one that the teammates ran over to congratulate. But uh, presence of mind from Steve Wright slotted it into Richie. Distance won't be a problem. Just negotiating which way the wind is going to take the ball as it comes off his foot. No kicks are easy today. Peter Ritchie. Kick number 10. Well, he's just pushed that one to the left. Well, he did the right thing, really. The wind's been blowing it left to right in that goal area all day. Probably kicked it where it wanted to, but it didn't bend back. 7-7 seven, seven to 5-3. Clarence in front. You know, folk need a steady in goal. Might be a chance here as it's opened up and towards the middle. Troy White, been well held all day by Mark Richards, who's been a very unassuming but effective player. Well, the defenders have been the better players all day. We've only seen Brownless come into the game in this particular particular quarter uh, to have any significant impact on a forward line. Big tap by Dean. Williams creates a path, but then left it behind. Off the ground by Sproul, allows them a bit of breathing space. But Richards has it now at half back. Round the corner towards Jones. The fumble, but Williams is there. This way, that away, then around the corner to Jones. He kept on going. Dax leading. And we stuck out the one arm. Ball still in, and Wilton. Again, forced to defend under enormous pressure. And I think he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. Yes, the boundary umpires called that out on the full. Must have slipped over below the knee. I'll tell you what, Rob, from where he was, the boundary umpire, 50 metres away, that's a pretty good call. So Dak, who's kicked two goals, has got it. He knows where they are. Can he kick his third with kick number five? Wind will bring it back for him. Not enough. And it's gone way out of bounds and on the ball. That wind, uh, Rob, has really uh, changed around about three or four times in this quarter. It's coming from all different directions. Very, very awkward for players to judge their uh, disposal. And Craig Stevenson from the back pocket. Good distance with the kick. Gains about 60 metres. Deniman, he's been really caught all day. Never allowed to break free. Wade, he's been a good player. Kicks it in towards full forward, but King attacks the ball pretty hard and takes a good mark in front of John Callum. His handball off to Wilton. On his own again. It's a little worm burner. Hill, uh, Higgins able to pick it up. Cullum intercepts cleverly back to Williams. He's having an impact. Dak's all wrapped up. He's got to be holding the ball. So the finishing wasn't good for Clarence. Under too much pressure. And Dean King kicks out towards the wing. Up high. Humphrey one-handed. Not quite good enough. Scotty Wade was good in that contest. Backed himself in. Dean doing an excellent job. Noonan takes that ball from the head out. 
weaves his way through about three players. His kick's not effective. It does find Cullen. Snaps around the corner. It's high into the pocket. Dak has an opportunity. The ball's still in play. Stevenson, his kick out towards half-back flank. There's nobody there. Higgins runs onto the ball. Oh, Jones got a, a good bounce, but he's tackled brilliantly by Horn and free kick. What a great tackle that was from Lee Horn. They're working overtime, you know, fact, remembering they're going to the non-scoring end. They're doing it fairly well. And Gary or White, which one, it doesn't matter. White gives it to Gary. He's probably the better kick. <laughs> Handy for New Norfolk. And the Eagles head to half four. They're hopelessly outnumbered here. Oh, excellent mark taken by Daniel Holm. He's having a quiet day. Looks a bit injured. There's the mark again. Ball's now up on centre wing. Holdsworth sharp over the line, but they have a boundary throw in. Only been 22 free kicks paid today. And the game has been allowed to flow, even though it's been a scrambly affair caused by the wind and breezy weather. King now at half back. Gets shepherded. Oh, terrible kick. And that's gone out the full. Well, it's disappointing because New Norfolk have worked so hard. The possession rate's about equal. Wade takes that handball from Hurd. He's decked after he kicked the ball, and there'll be a free kick relay. And Brownless, who marked the ball anyway, as you see on screen there, it'll be Cullen who'll take the kick. A little bit confusing that decision. Brownless did mark the ball. But Cullen, who's off screen, Winter is uh, expressing his uh, disappointment once again. Cullen, his high kick into the pocket. And it goes over all players through for a minor score. Well, Smith, 17 years of age, down with the 27 or 28. Speaking from experience, Rob, he can go a little bit too. Who, Darren Winter? And Matthew Smith. He can handle himself very nicely, thank you very much. Is that what they teach the boys in the Teal Cup now? Charming. Craig Stevenson, bomb, long kick the centre half back, and Denneman finally in some space. He's found it difficult to get going today. Into Humphrey, drew the man, and put him under pressure. He gets back to Denneman. He can go out wide. Tremendous stuff from New Norfolk. Horn has it now. In towards full forward. No one and half of the Eagles. But Randy Peck. Lewis Winter is at about 14 free kicks played against him today. The free kick wasn't on Darren Winter, it was more on uh, David Donato for shepherding uh, young Smith out of the marking contest. He just wasn't able to get there because the ball was not within 10 metres of the marking contest. Well, let's have another look at it. You see Donato holding him out. Smith overacting the situation to his own advantage. Well, what an important kick. He kicked one in the second quarter from the free kick. One of the Eagles, only two goals in that turn. And boy, do they need this. They trail by 17 points. 25 metres out. He's kicked the goal that New Norfolk desperately needed. And they hang in there. Gee, if they're within three or four and three-quarter time with the win, who knows? Well, he's a skillful young player, this young man. And... Uh... And the bluff of Darren Winter on him, that wouldn't worry him one little bit. He's, he's not that sort of player to be intimidated, and he's handling himself pretty well amongst these circumstances. And so too the others. It was a frenetic passage of play in the middle of the ground. It looked like Denneman and uh, Higgins were going to be overrun, but Denneman followed it up, got it out to a horn, and his kick into the top of the goal square. They're really lacking a key marking target, or particularly somebody who can take a mark in the air in that forward line. Gary has to work his way downfield to get possessions. Troy White's not doing as much as he ought, and Tim Edwards isn't doing as much as he can in that forward position. Gary, that excess of handball in the midfield probably put their forwards out of position, and I think that's the reason they had no long option on that occasion. Well, Denneman went to, uh, to kick the ball in the first instance, Bob, but there was no target for him to kick the ball. That's why he kept going. So uh, Dean, who finally gets that tap out. Quayle couldn't get the ball out. It's kicked off the ground. Stevie Wright, Gurry coming out as Cullen. Takes it cleanly. His kick is not a good one. And Michael Gurry will take a kick. Well, what I think there's more New Norfolk supporters here than Clarence supporters. They're providing the greater cheer. I think they're all here today. The town's come down en masse as it's punched out of play by Richards, who's done a terrific job on Troy White at centre half back. 7 8 50 Clarence, New Norfolk 6 3 39. Low scoring. 94 grand final this one as we're some 19 minutes into the third term. Wade now on centre wing. 
Oh, good kick from Wade. Collision here, Brownless and Jones. Cullen is a very dangerous player in possession. Lost it. Jones there to lend the hand. Round the corner. Oh, the smothering, fantastic. And in their desperation to go for the footy, they all went for it and spoiled themselves to Norfolk. And that is a Clarence free kick. Wilton and Newman getting involved. So Johnny Cullen. Gets the lead. Brownless the target. Young late in the scene. Forced to run away from Dak. Wright's lurking now. Bumped off it by a big spud young. And he's held it in. They are desperate in Norfolk. Equally so Clarence. Who went into this game hot favourites. Gee, they've got a game on their hands. Well, they're unbackable. And they've got a real chance. As Blackaby's taken a bit high. He's held with the ball. Oh, my oh, God my goodness. Fun. That ball was held to him clearly. There was no way that he could get rid of it, and the umpiring in that instance is totally inconsistent. Yes, you get it on replay, Blackaby free, and the, see the ball pinned to his chest. I suppose in defence of the umpire, he was on the wrong side. If you're in doubt, ball it up. Exactly, no excuse for that decision. So Danny Noonan. You'll have to kick from 45. Oh, it's a dangerous kick. They really punished New Norfolk on that occasion. Well, the goal's gone next to Danny Noonan, but rather fortuitous that the umpire was on the wrong side and he paid the free kick against Blackaby for holding the ball. And Noonan's been one of the significant contributors in this third quarter from uh, for the Clarence side. He was a couple of weeks ago when he went off Stephen Retro, you might recall, and went on to the ball, and Peter Ritchie went back there. But he's lifted in this particular quarter. He's had 17 possessions, 13 kicks, four hand passes, and a very important goal for them at the 20-minute mark. Yeah, fantastic pick-up for the club to get Noonan back from the Brisbane Bears. All oh, right, great hands out to Matt Jones. Clarence streaming forward again. Very important 10 minutes or so coming up. Clarence with the win, and they've got it at half forward. Callender Jones, quick kick. Cut off by... Whale for the Norfolk can redirect things across here towards Blackaby. He's got about 30 metres. Richie, the only one in front of him, can carry it a long way. Has a bounce. Oh, then kicks out wide. It'll work okay. McCartan went up way too early. He had to sit then and then drop the mark. Well, Richard Hill had an opportunity on that occasion to support McCartan and really just didn't do enough work. Over the back was Holdsworth. Blackaby on top of the ball. Donato tries to get it out of the pack. Exactly the same decision. Not paid. Blackaby again. Pops it up in the air. Horn is caught with the ball. Finally gets it away. Jones has been very active. Browning. He's wrapped up by Stevie Wright. And it'll be a ball up in the midfield. Seventeen points the margin. Dean, another good hit out. Williams, his quick kick. Out towards uh, Humphrey. The ball taken to ground. And Humphrey is going to be paid that mark with a free kick at half back. 22 and a half minutes gone, almost 23 now. Clarence by 17 points, as Bob just mentioned. Clarence leading another goal before three-quarter time to be more sure of themselves. You know, Norfolk will come home with the breeze. Gurry played as a forward since uh, the second quarter. Higgins, who's had trouble today. Denneman lurking on the ball. He got home high with the hip and shoulder. Kick back towards the wing. McCartan and Gurry, or they fly amongst themselves. Kicked out to Quayle, wrapped up by Williams. Fantastic play from right to get it to Dean. Standing start. Humphrey versus Richie. Richie got rid of him. Oh, no free kick. Paid the mark. Williams screaming for it, and there's plenty of Clarence players free. Here's Donato can play on if he has to. But now he goes back for the set shot. This is where they've fallen away in the last half of their other finals games too, Rob. They've just lost concentration at the vital moments when they need to man up quickly when the other side has possession of the football. On that occasion, Richie just had a choice of either Donato or Cullen to pick out. Donato had a good start. It's been quiet since. That looks pretty good. They're now four goals in front, Clarence. Well, it's Donato second, and as I say, you're a very ordinary manning up from you, Norfolk. You, these younger guys really have to keep the concentration levels up for the entire quarter, not just be there for the first 15 minutes or so. A great camera shot of Donato kicking truly. But they just uh, been thrown with a couple of changes. Richie's coming to that forward line, and uh, Humphrey had to go with him. 
Wilton's now picked him up, so the bench for New Norfolk have to maintain their concentration in terms of knowing who the matchups are going to be and who's going to be responsible and accountable when the opposition has won possession. Jim Ritchie dwarfs Wilton down there in the forward line. There's a change just being made there. Wilton coming back up onto Donato and uh, Gurry going back onto Ritchie. Centre bounce. Dean, been very good today for them. Wade gets a little kick out of the centre. Wilton on his right foot. Chips it out towards Hill. Hill knocked off the ball by Hull. Just too good for him today. Hull, his kick, inaccurate and out of bounds on the full. Quail, the player, to take the ball. Up towards White. White almost marked the ball. It's on the ground. McCartan, Wade, somehow gets out of that. Weaves his way around and snapped the ball around on his left foot up towards Brownless in front. Almost marked the ball. Wilton in front's going to be paid the mark. Well, that certainly came off Blair Brownless's hands. So New Norfolk desperately need to manufacture a goal in the final two or three minutes of the third quarter. Well, that was a pretty poor kick. And Higgins, who's been down today, outmarked by Jones. He's got Noonan on. Noonan can go all the way here. 50 out, closing. It's a huge kick. Brownless, can he get back? No, he can't. He was just off balance there. If he was approaching that kick from the goals, he would have been a chance. But Noonan, gee, he's been a good player. Had a good quarter, Rob. He's had 18 positions. He, uh, he's had eight this quarter doing it very, very well, and he's really one of the keys for them coming back. Well, Stevenson's kick was a good long one, but he found Scott Wade in the centre of the ground, and he chips it across to Stevie Wright. Plays on, just balks around, gets inside, has a shot at the goals, and once again, we see Clarence wasting opportunities. Stevie Wright, normally a reliable kick. I guess one of the other players that's come into, this quarter, into the game this quarter has been Wade. He's picked up a number of possessions. Change made, Gary. Cooney on, Williams off. Nick Davey, the young Clarence player, yet to get a run in the 94 grand final. And these sort of tactics with players going on and off the bench are really confusing the younger New Norfolk players. They've got no idea who they're manning up. Craig Stevenson, the big long kick, the wind catches it. So New Norfolk will definitely be coming home with the wind in the final quarter. Blackaby taps it in the direction of Denham and Moore hit and hope that it works for them. Oh, Morby's had a fidgety, fumbly day, slipped over at the crucial moment, but we'll forgive him. It's pouring here at North Hobart. Browning. Slaps it out. No one there for them. Wade, another possession. Beautifully shepherded by McCallum. Wade in towards full forward. Stevenson's back there for the Eagles. He couldn't hang on. Wade's had 20 possessions, Rob, and doing it pretty well. Just dropping back off the play as we normally see him doing. And those big, long left foot bombs into the goal square, really putting the you know, both defenders under a lot of pressure. And Clarence threatening for another goal here. Wilton under intense pressure. The pressure has been fantastic from Clarence today. Blackity keeps it in. Browning had time to adjust the hair as well and he picks it up and kicks it towards the wing the wind holds it up and again a boundary throw in I think you also could be uh, hoping for three-quarter time very quickly it can't be too far away approaching 28 minutes well they've still got the capacity to get up in this last quarter if this breeze remains as strong as it is they're not that far out of a 25 points is not an unassailable margin Jones takes it off the ruck in towards full forward and falling for a diving mark as Gurry did it well there Richie sat behind him, waited for the opportunity. Gurry intercepted. Browning has to go up in front. Noonan did it well, punched it forward, but Wilton, who's been terrific, handballs, misses the target. Stevie Wright took it out of play. Well, that's a very, very silly thing to do because the up player was standing right there. This is and where they you become a free kick away, Gary. You don't give it away to the captain coach. Into full forward, and once again, a good, strong mark by Gary. Yeah, you're right, Bob, and uh, yeah, they're becoming a little distracted. You know, very undisciplined on Wilton's part, and I just watched young Smith on the mark, too, giving a little bit of lip, too. Got the way to go in a grand final when you're only 25 points out of it. Three-quarter time here. Clarence appealing for out on the full. They're not going to get it, but the ruse are edging closer to back-to-back -back premierships here as the rain continues to tumble at North Hobart. Because at three-quarter time, Clarence 9-10-64, New Norfolk 6-3-39, but don't despair, Eagles fans. 25 points the difference, and you're coming home with about a five-goal breeze. So anything could still happen. But they've got to find some goals from somewhere, Gary. 
Yes, Hill's been very well held by Holm, and I can see the, uh, the coaching staff talking with Denniman, trying to give him a, a perspective from the boundary line on, on what they need. And, and I guess, really, Stevie Wright's going to be fairly comfortable about where they are. They've got to kick five goals to hit the front, you Norfolk, and it's, they're going to need some special player in that forward line. Matthew Smith's their leading goal kicker, and he's kicked both of his, from, uh, both goals from free kicks. The others, Eisel's off the ground. He got one from a free kick as well. Hill hasn't hit the scorebook at all just yet, and that's very important that, uh, that he can come back. You can see them on your screen there. Dak's been pretty well held by Young. He only has two. Donato got a couple, and uh, importantly, he came on and took a good mark, an unattended mark in the, in the third quarter to register his second. Richie, of course, starting to come into the game in the forward line. I can't really see a lethal goal kicker in that new Norfolk forward line, but I can up the other end in the uh, Clarence forward line. So 25 points the difference, Bob. Are they still a chance? Well, they are. I think, sadly, for New Norfolk, it looks as if the rain's coming in. And if you look at the stats, Clarence uh, just edging away there. They did start to take control of the game at about the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. Mark's pretty well even. Handballs, well, uh, I think, personally, I think New Norfolk have overused the ball, uh, particularly uh, some of the, the younger players. Uh, maybe the pressure is, is getting to them a bit. As you see Denniman there addressing his players. They, they're still with an op, in with an opportunity. Clarence, obviously, the experience is on their side, but New Norfolk have done a sensational job in getting here and been very, very competitive today, and you never know. Well, they won't be thinking about being competitive now. Sounds Garrett, like you... you've written them off, Bob. Oh, well, I just think that their lack of experience and what happened in the last two finals that they've played, as you uh, stated earlier, Gary, two goals in one half and six in the other half is not going to win them a grand final. Well, let's not forget that Clarence had the breeze in that quarter and they kicked three with it. You Norfolk kicked one against it. So uh, anything could happen if this breeze maintains its direction towards that scoreboard pocket. There's every chance that they can get up and do it. They've got a few sore players. King and Sproul are off on the interchange at this particular point in time. And I guess C.B. Wright's reiterating the point that we have another 30 minutes of football to play and don't think that 25 points is going to be enough to hang on to. We've got to attack the footy again and play attacking football if we want another Premiership Cup. We've got to have a, we've got a couple of highlights for you, Gary, that we might check out from that third quarter as Stevie Wright addresses the boys. Now, here's Wilton under enormous pressure for New Norfolk and Noonan taking the mark. And Danny Noonan became a very, very important player in that third quarter. Over 20 possessions for the ex-Brisbane Bear. And there's Brownless with a good mark. He hasn't done much today, but when he's done something like that, it's been significant. He's an important player. There you're right, Bob. The player banging the ball into the forward line there on your screen, Scott Wade. Significant contribution in that particular quarter. And uh, he had 10 possessions in the third quarter, and that's terrific work rate. Noonan had eight. Gurry's been very, very good whether playing half, uh, playing up forward or playing in defence. He's one of their leading kick winners in that he's got 16. You saw the goal kicked by Smith, his second. His second from a free kick after the shepherding infringement by David Donato. And the teams have broken up. Let's now go down to the boundary line. Here's Chris Smythe in the Clarence camp. Thanks, Rob. Well, uh, Grant Fagan addressed the players first up. He wants them to stay focused. He believed they had most of the play that quarter, but they didn't capitalise. Then Stevie Wright took over, and he said premierships are won by special efforts. They've been ahead in the tackles. They're ahead in the possessions. He wants them to stay ahead in this last quarter. They've won three of the quarters. They've got to win the last one. It's going to be a terrific last quarter, Rob. Thanks, Chris. And in the New Norfolk camp, John Kenny. Well, Darren Denham did exactly what you were expecting to do. He reminded the players of the sacrifices they'd made all this year, and he said, you're not going to let it go now. He said, we all have to lift. He said, starting with me. And he said, as a team, we're supporting the community. They're supporting us. He said, give everything for the last quarter and win the flag. John Kenny's still very much aroused on the boundary line, and we're away. 25 points to the margin. You Norfolk must get going on the scoreboard. They go into attack first, but Hurd's back there for the ruse. Hurd kicks it out wide, but Gurry's the only chance here. He's got a paddock if he can get it. He does. Spins around with his US Marine haircut and picks out a teammate here on the half forward line. Looks like Blackaby. Blackaby with the ball at half forward. Looking in towards Mickey Eyes, who have been off the ground, but he's marked the ball on the 50 metre line. Marking him now is Winter. There's got to be some movement from New Norfolk on their forward line. Shaping up to kick a big barrel, I think, Rob. Interesting whether he can get onto it. Goal. Well, he's kicked one of those wobbly torpedoes into Oh, Smith just pushed Richie straight in the back and gave away a free kick. Not good play. Peter Richie in defence. It's a gift, really, wasn't it? The ball's in your forward line and you do something like that. Very undisciplined. 
Well, a bit of an experience because the umpire is right on the scene as Richie runs away, kicks it wide out towards the wing. Underneath it was Noonan, couldn't control it. Eisel looks inboard, found Horn. Horn's kick in towards full forward. Edwards with a chance. Winter punched the ball away. The ball's running towards the boundary line. Troy White keeps it in play. Terrific play by Troy White. Edwards, he's looking for someone to give it to. Just about throws it away. And Richards, the safety of the boundary line. 9-10-64, Clarence, New Norfolk 6-3-39. I hope you're enjoying the grand final of 94 on ABC Sport. White wins it, and Clarence will probably be defending for most of this quarter. We saw a similar style of play in that second quarter too. You might re remember, Rob, they just kept knocking it over the boundary line, holding it up, letting the clock tick down. New Norfolk need a goal while they've got it inside 50. They've been the attacking team in the first two minutes of this final quarter, and again, the boundary line beats Black.